Hey, in this screencast, you're going to learn how to adjust the position and size of the items on the grid, which is critical to know in order to create real world websites with CSS grid. We're going to create a mockup for a website. And here in the index.html, you can see the markup for that. As you can see, we're targeting each of the items using a class name, header, menu, content, and footer. To start with, we have this two by two grid. Each of the columns are one fraction unit. So they're responsive, as you can see, and each of the rows are 40 pixels tall. For our website though, we're going to need three rows as we want the header to take up the top row, the menu and the content to be on the second row and the footer to be on the third row all the way at the bottom. So let's create a third row here. Let's place it in between the two existing rows and give it a height of 200 pixels. As you can see, now the header and the menu is on the top row and the content and the footer in the second row. And our third row is blank as we haven't filled it with content yet, since our items only take up the first four grid cells. So let's change that. We'll start by targeting the header and making it span from the left hand side all the way over to the far right hand side. To achieve that, we need to head into the dot header and give it a grid column start, set that to one. And also give it a grid column and it's that to three. As you can see, now the header spans across the entire first row. And what we're saying here is that we want the header to start at the first column line and end at the third column line. And you might wonder why we have three column lines when we only have defined two columns. Well, that's because the first column line goes from top to bottom on the left side of the grid. The second column line is the one that separates the two columns. And the third is the one that goes from top to bottom on the far right hand side of the grid. So when you have two columns, you have three column lines. And you can write that like this. Alternatively, though, we can also use the shorthand method, which I prefer. Let's remove this line here and also remove dash start and rather do one forward slash three. As you can see, that gives the exact same result. Let's also do the exact same thing with the footer. Like that. Now the footer also spans across the entire width. Alternatively, we could have written this in a different way. We could have done, we could have done one forward slash span two. That'll give the exact same result. What we're here saying is that we want the footer to start at the first column line and span across two columns. And finally, there's also a third way, which is to write minus one. That'll target the very last column line. And now that we know that we want our footer and header to span all the way to the last column line, we can do that with both of them and take the advantage of the fact that in the future, we might not know how many columns we're going to have in this grid, as we can change that however we want. So this is a nice little trick when you don't know exactly how many columns the item will span across in the grid. And to prove that point for you, I'm actually going to change the amount of columns we have in the grid right now. Because we don't want the menu here and the content to take up an equal amount of space in the width. That doesn't make sense. We want the menu to be a narrow sidebar on the left hand side here. And we want the content to take up much more space. And we could do this without adding more columns by simply doing one FR four FR, for example. Now you can see that the content takes up much more space since the second column is four fraction units and the first column is only one fraction unit. However, this is not a very flexible way of doing it because now we're still stuck with two columns on a website layout and you normally want a lot more columns than that in order to have the flexibility to shuffle around and change the content. So what I'm gonna do instead is use repeat, give it 12 columns, each of one fraction unit. Now the menu and the content take up one fraction unit each. In other words, one column each. And they're actually forcing the columns to be as wide as they need in order to display their content, which is the two descriptions we've added inside items. In order to make this look nice again, I'm gonna head into the content class and give it a grid column. We know that it starts on the second column line, so two, and we want it to go all the way final column line like that. So we're going to do minus one. 
And now we have a 12 column layout instead of a two column layout, meaning that we have much more flexibility if we want to shuffle around on stuff. And notice that the footer and the header still spans across the entire width, which is solely because we're using the minus one here. If we had stuck with the three here and here, that wouldn't have worked at all. So let's change it back to minus one. Now let's also look at the grid row property. As we're going to need that, if we, for example, want the menu here to span all the way to the top. In order to do that, we first have to change the header though, as we need to make the space here available. This little grid cell here needs to be available for the menu. So we'll change it to two. Now we have a blank cell here, meaning that we can head into the menu class and give it a grid row and set that to one slash three meaning that it spans from the first row line to the third row line. As you can see, took up the spot here in the top left corner, because this is the first row line, this is the second, and here is the third. The fourth then is, of course, the, the bottom line. Okay, so before we jump onto the next screencast, I would recommend you to, for example, try to make the menu span all the way to the bottom, or alternatively, make it appear on the right-hand side instead of on the left-hand side. And then in the next screencast, I'm going to show you a really cool way of defining layouts, which gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of shuffling around on the content and experimenting. So stay tuned and I'll see you there.